I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to revisit the dried butterfly pea flower tea. This is a pigment that you extract with just boiling water, and it's pH sensitive. And so when you add acid, it shifts from more of a blue to more of a pink. And I was able to show previously that you can get some of those pigment differences to remain on yarn, which was incredible. Of course, this is a fugitive dye, so it is likely to fade when exposed to direct sunlight, and it could also fade over time, but it's still a fun project. When I originally made my cup of tea with these flowers, I remember watching the pigment sort of flow out of the flowers, watching that diffuse through the hot liquid. And that gave me a little bit of an idea. Many, many years ago, towards the beginning of Dye Pot Weekly, I tried to space dye some yarn using tea bags. And we were able to get different colors in there because I used different types of tea on that yarn. Today, I don't want to use a lot of different types of tea, but I want to set up an immersion, low immersion situation, then add these flowers into the dye bath directly to see if we get something that is a little more variegated, a little less uh, even in terms of color coverage. Now, one downside to this technique is because the flowers themselves are gonna come into contact directly with the yarn, I will definitely be picking out bits of flowers from the yarn in the end. At least, I think that's likely what will happen. That's often what happens when I have the uh, vegetation in with the dye bath. But we're gonna give this a shot, and I'm feeling kinda optimistic. If you'd like to play around with this yourself, I will have uh, this exact tea linked down in the video description. Today we're in a catering steam pan across two burners on my stove. I haven't added any acid yet, uh, but I'm going to bring in 200 grams of Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 80% Superwash Fine Highland Wool, 20% Poly Amid, and is the yarn base that I dyed last time and had really good results with, so that's why we're going to be using this one again today. Now there were eight cups of water in the pan, again no acid, and you can see that we have a good amount of liquid, uh, but things are still a little bit low, so that way when the colors start to spread, they won't necessarily spread the entire length of the pan. I am having a bit of an internal debate right now about acid because I dyed two skeins. I'm going to start heating this up. Last time I dyed two different types of yarn, I brewed the tea and dyed 200 grams in one pan. And then I did a second brewing of the tea and dyed 100 grams of yarn with, I think, without acid in that leftover. And the pigmentation was a little bit different. And so I can't be sure that one was less pigmented from not having acid in there because it was a second brew. But it is possible that having acid present and whatever the pH change that causes our pigment to shift, it's possible that that also makes it more possible for the pigments to bind to the yarn. I'm not sure. I don't know the chemistry of this particular molecule, but there's a chance. So. I do want to add acid. Maybe what I'll do is we'll add some to the yarn with no acid. And my tap water is slightly acidic. And then we'll add acid. Maybe then we'll flip the yarn and add acid or something. But let's start with no acid and just kind of see what happens. Because who knows, maybe we'll end up getting more coverage on the yarn than I'm expecting. Oh, I'll say we're hot. <laughs> Let it get a little bit warm there. I just reduced the, the heat to low. And in this little cup, I have about half a cup of our flowers. And I'm just going to add some on. Those ones are a little bit close. Now, I don't know if there's enough liquid. I'm not expecting to get some kind of like speckles or anything like this. That, uh, and in fact, I'm really not seeing much of anything happening yet. Maybe I need to give it a little bit of time. So I use maybe half. 
on here. Aha! Aha! Okay, I'm seeing some pigment come out of some of these. Okay, I just need to be patient. Let me show you. Okay, see down here? We're starting to see some pigment come out. Oh, that is really, really cool. Over here, you can see some more spread as it's wicking down. I thought that I would need to come and like press on it <laughs> with a spoon or something, and which I think I might do eventually. But for now, let's go ahead and have things wait, I think five minutes, and then we'll see what we might wanna do. Okay, so this is where we look now. And I'm zooming in uh, so that way we have a reference point of time zero versus five minutes later. The temperature of the colors might look a little bit different because uh, my rechargeable light is starting to dim. But let's zoom out. And the color is definitely spreading, although slowly. I'm not going to bring over a slotted spoon and help things along a little bit by just making things wetter. <laughs> Uh, I forget, did I use two cups total maybe the first time I did this? I don't remember, but I think, hmm, I don't know what I want to do. I'm debating. There's still definitely a lot of pigment that is in here. Uh, and now that things are getting wetter, uh, we might see some more spread maybe. I'm gonna give this another five minutes now that I've pressed things down, and then we'll think about how we wanna proceed. If we wanna add more water, if I wanna to wanna to add some more acid, we'll see. I mean, acid at all, not even more acid. I haven't even added acid yet. If anyone's curious, this is the magnetic light I use over the microwave, which works really, really great until then I realize I need to recharge it. <laughs> okay, it doesn't look like the me on the monitor that there's that much, but let me zoom into where we were looking before. And the blues have spread out a lot. In fact, a lot of this is all very pale blue now. Um, so there is spread that we're seeing. But now I think I do wanna add some acid. And I'm gonna just bring over a tablespoon of white vinegar and pour it on. Oh, that never gets old. You could see just like an instantaneous shift. Uh, where I have added the acid. I think we're gonna do four tablespoons total. I'm adding it, ooh, interesting. There's definitely been spread because I don't know if it showed up on camera, but this area that looks very white over here uh, definitely turned slightly pink when I added the acid. Okay, but now, instead of just stirring or something, I'm gonna lift the yarn, and some of these flowers are gonna fall off. That's fine. Some of them are now going to be on the bottom of the pan, which is also fine. And we're going to flip. I'm still curious if we'll end up getting some yarn that feels a little bit variegated or if everything's going to feel tonal, but sort of subtly tonal. Um, I'm not sure how that will work out, but I know what I want to do now. Uh, and that is I think I want to add more water. So I'm going to get another, I think, four cups of water, just so that way we have a little bit more liquid. This is also going to cause some things to spread more. But I'm definitely still seeing a lot of variation uh, in the color in here. And I am going to turn off the heat for a bit so, until we get nice and steamy again. And then we're going to add more flowers onto this side. Okay, it's getting warmer. I'm going to leave the heat on high as I add more of these flowers in. But see, my, part of my rationale here, even though that one did not go in the water very much at all, is that now, as we add our flowers, they are a little bit more likely to be able to submerge in some liquid. Whereas last time, they were very much sitting more on the surface. And so again, I don't know if we are gonna see much tonal variation in here. Right now it looks like we will, but the problem with natural pigments is that overall they tend to strike to yarn much, much slower than say, than say acid dyes, which means that uh, you, because it is, whoop, that was a lot over there, because it's slower overall, uh, that means that as the pigments start to dissolve and spread into the water, 
uh, we, it doesn't strike to the yarn very fast. And so since it's not striking to the yarn very fast at all, that means that, well, it's going to spread and then we see it more all over. Um, but kind of just trying to bring in these dregs. Now right here, it looks like that we got some speckles because we had tiny bits of this powder come in. I'm not anticipating that we might see speckles this small. It's possible that at some of the places where a flower comes in contact with the yarn, we might get a little bit deeper color there, but these pigments are all going to dissolve and it's gonna spread more. I would be shocked if I observed speckles on the finished yarn that weren't the result of having some dried flower bits left there. <laughs> I have a feeling as I come, and I'm just gonna gently press everything in to make sure things are nice and wet. I have a feeling that when it comes to washing, we're gonna be reminded why I basically made a giant tea bag last time. Uh, and that is just that, you know, some of this might stick to the yarn a little bit. But, again, I'm curious if we'll see lighter and darker patches throughout the yarn. There's definitely a chance that that will work. There's also a chance that the colors are gonna spread more and everything will be really, really soft. But I don't think we're gonna get little like pops and speckles because from what we saw before, things were more spread. But anyway, from now, I am going to heat this for 30 minutes. So I don't know how this is gonna go. <laughs> uh, I have no idea how much tonal variation we will have. But you can see after 30 minutes that the color has spread. We have a lot of pigment uh, in our water as well. Now, we might still have some areas that are darker and less dark. I think that we will have a tonal yarn here, but that probably could be achieved by having some like physical resist in the yarn, by having it more scrunched up with lower water volume uh, after we brew it. So we'll see what a pain it is to remove everything. <laughs> when we wash it. But now I'm going to turn off the heat and I'm going to go ahead and leave the yarn here in the pan to cool off completely. Just so that way the pigment can have a little bit more time with the yarn. No matter what, we still got a really fun color here. Here is the yarn cooled off and things are looking a little bit yellow to me. Uh, it's definitely more of just like a true blue and I don't know. I don't know what we're going to see. Um, the good news, <laughs> as I take this out of the dye bath, um, the good, ooh, we might get some patches of color where the flowers were. I don't know. Uh, the good news is that a lot of the flowers have kind of remained in the dye bath. Okay, I'm going to add our yarn to some water and start rinsing this out. And I guess in the meantime, we can remove some of these flowers. Now, one downside of this tea is it definitely has like a very earthy scent to it. Um, and more like, I don't know, it's not, it doesn't give off a flowery scent at all. Oh, that color is so pretty though. All right, I'm gonna add also some soap. I definitely see some tonal variation in here. Uh, there are areas that are a lighter blue and a deeper blue. And I think now I am gonna spend a little bit of time trying to pick out all these flowers. Okay, that really wasn't bad. I have a feeling that I might come across some more, but Overall, the flowers stayed really well intact, which made it a lot easier to remove. Uh, I think, yeah, it could have, other dried things that were rehydrated have definitely been more challenging to get out of yarn. Uh, what was it? The, was it the Skittles? There was something. Oh, the jelly beans. Oh, the jelly beans. That was the worst. I don't know if it'll still be there once it's dried, but we do have some areas that are very pigmented. Uh, that I think were where the flowers were placed. But we definitely overall have some tonal variation in here. There are less saturated and more saturated places. It's just, 
We need to get something that is like when I use some drops of dye. Aha, I found one. <laughs> uh, where I use drops of dye to add color to yarn. Um, when I do that, then we end up getting more of like a speckly effect. But anyway, I'm gonna rinse this a few more times. There's very little pigment coming out still. And so then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. But I do want to share as like a little reminder, there's a ton of pigment that's left over. So when you're dyeing yarn with tea or really any kind of natural dye, you're not going to exhaust the color. And so that's not something that you're looking for. But you could potentially get deeper color if you leave the yarn in with the, the dye with the tea overnight. Uh, I just let it cool completely to room temperature. But anyway, yeah, that's looking very, very clear. Uh, so now let's go take a look at the finished dry yarn. Here is our finished yarn. And while it wasn't difficult to get the flowers out, of it you know it's tonal but we're not seeing too many little patches of color from those flowers not that I reasonably could have expected that but I was hoping for something patchier like in some cases where I've added just little drops of color of as a dye to yarn I knew there was no chance it would be like that but I couldn't help but hope now, this is so subtle, I'm not sure how well it's even showing up on camera. There are a couple of patches right here where we do see a little bit of increased depth of color. It is a little easier to see this, I think, in person than it is on camera. Ooh, ooh, I think that's visible. I think that's visible right here. You can see some like almost little speckles. It's m incredibly subtle though. With the yarn twisted up, you can appreciate more of the tonal quality that we have here. And I think that the technique we used did help us give deeper patches and lighter patches in the yarn. They're just way more subtle than maybe I was wondering if we would get. Think like back to some of the dyeing yarn with candy videos. That's the kind of thing I wasn't sure if we'd get. But anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope you enjoyed this other look at this pH-sensitive butterfly pea flower tea. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play with, even if the results are mild. Now, one thing I didn't try here was to use some kind of mordant. Uh, I don't know if pre-soaking our yarn in like with an alum salt would help get more color to bind, or if it would shift the color. Uh, because mordants sometimes either shift the color, help more pigment bind, but also depending on the colored molecule, um, doesn't necessarily do much at all. Uh, and so that is in theory something I could try. And honestly, right now, this is a fun, simple, food safe project that you can do at home, you could do with kids, make a hypothesis of what color, like the final yarn would be, and things like that. So. I'm probably going to leave this particular tea here, but that doesn't mean I won't revisit tea dyeing yarn in the future. It's been a long time since I've done that. If you'd like to see me play around with this more, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, give the video a thumbs up, and let me know what you might like to see more in the future down in the comments below. And if you want a little more input in what's coming up, in Dye Pot Weekly, uh, you can join the Chemnitz Patreon. Chemnitz patrons vote every month for the newest video in the Dye Pot PS series, but the things that are more in the middle of the pack often work their way into Dye Pot Weekly episodes. You can find links to the Chemnitz Patreon and my Etsy shop and where else you can find me on social media, all in the video description. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.